tabloid mission. It seems to only be a handful of them because there's like a completion screen. Collect eight DNA strands, reach the finish time. Finish line. It's pretty straightforward. One, two, three. Ah. <laughs> the glass is so hard to see because the room's already like the color of the glass. I keep flying into it like a fool. That's nine. I mean, I guess I can just call it. Oop, missed those. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. There we go. Not the best completion rate, but... Let's see. Yeah, basically not even trying gave me the same score you get otherwise. Looks like there's only five Floyd missions in the entire game. I kind of thought there was more. And I think I got that rainbow commendation for like nailing it at one point, which admittedly might have been just the three Triforces. I don't know. I think the Floyd missions might just be in here like for fun. I kind of get the feeling that they didn't, like, really have somewhere to go with those, if you know what I mean. Like, they maybe, pl they maybe thought there was going to be, like, a through line for them, but then they just kind of didn't. Oh, shit, you guys. You little bastards. Don't ever hide from me again. Well, that's it, then. I found every bear. What was through that hole? Now I'm like afraid to know. On one hand, it could be like something really cool, like an important weapon upgrade or like anything else. Or it could just be... Uh, another path that takes me to the boss fight. Or maybe it just spits me out somewhere else, I don't know. It was through here. I guess, I guess we'll check. Now I can confidently go through it because there's no other worries of me missing out. Watch me get to the end of all this, and I'm missing like one spaceship part. And it's like, that's the spaceship part you get for getting uh, a perfect score in every Floyd mission. And I'm like, no! <laughs> so I have to replay to each Floyd mission location, and then also play the Floyd mission over and over again until I nail it. I, th I think they might have th thought they'd go more, like, further with the Floyd missions. But I think the I think the uh, the time I got the Triforces might be one of the one of the only mandatory moments for them. And then there's just kind of like a relic of like, oh, here's a fun mini game to play here and there. Like mini games are pretty common. I mean, Jet Force Gemini and Banjo because Banjo Tui both have like multiplayer competitive modes where you can play with your friends. Banjo, like this game just has a versus mode. Like, just as these characters shooting at each other in some levels. And I think, uh... I think Banjo-Kazooie... Banjo-Tooie... I think this is just like a variety of mini-games throughout the game that you can play competitively against your friends. Just so there is a multiplayer feature. Because there was kind of a pressure to have that just because... What do you do when your brother wants to play or whatever? And it's a single-player game. Oh no, Mom! So it's like, okay, here's the weird... Janky first-person shooter mode that shows up for a moment in that one time or whatever. Uh, here it is as a multiplayer mode. Play with friends. Have fun. <laughs> I think that's what they did.
Thankfully, I think they made the path pretty easy to remember. I think if I just keep hanging right, I eventually get to... Nope. I'm close, though. Oh, here? I was right. Cool. Yeah, they made the path pretty easy to keep track of. What? Okay, I, I bounced around way too much just now and got myself killed. Um... Um... Thankfully there's a full health. Ow, shit. <laughs> I just came all the way back here for, for no reason. It's not even a path. Come on, that... That screams, I am a pathway. I think, I get the feeling that every single person in the audience who hasn't played this game and, and then therefore has like a memory that supersedes their observations. I, I bet that everyone thought that was a path. There's a beam of light coming out of it and it's a hole in the ground. That screams fall through this hole to come out somewhere else. What in the world? It, it, it communicates the idea that it's a hole to fall through so thoroughly that I'm still convinced it might be one. I'm, like, I, part of me is still wondering, like, do I need to come back as Juno? Because he's fire resistant? If Juno falls in that hole, then he, does he actually go through and come out the other side? Is that the secret here? I think that might be the secret. Hmm. Well. We did it, everybody. <laughs> Let's get back around. I guess I'll take the magenta doors. There's a couple of them. I think they're not there. They're like through here. Yeah, so that one's the one you come in through from the other side. Is this the exit? We're gonna find out. Oh, I took that as my answer for a second there, but I still don't know, actually. I, ow, shit. I will make note of the fact that there's like a big long cutscene where Lupus flies across this area. I, I do wonder what happens if Vela has a boss fight. Maybe she doesn't. I don't think any of the boss fights feature the special abilities of the characters, so there's no real, real reason for them to have to be exclusive. The tribal's also gone. Ah! Good news, everybody. You don't have to replay boss fights in this game. Cool. Big victory. I accomplished nothing this episode besides confusing my- uh, embarrassing myself. Confusing myself. Sometimes that too. Uh, Rithessa. Yeah. Bum ba bum! Bum ba bum! Time to replay this level because that's a thing you have to do a lot in this game. I know people were like, a collectathon in a rare game? Nah. But there is a kind of difference here. 
I, I feel like there's a reason why Banjo-Kazooie is kind of like the sweet spot that everyone remembers really fondly and is well regarded among the collectathon games. Because there's kind of something wrong in both... Let's see, so I already got that all of those as Juno, right? Yeah. I just need to come back for the mine. Uh, so in, in, in uh, Donkey Kong, the issue was that like... They arbitrarily made all of the bananas and coins the colors of one of the characters. And so you had to come back and play the level, every single level as every single character to get every single banana if you're doing the completion stuff. And it's like... not the good way to do collectibles. Because the better way to do collectibles is to have the collectibles be only accessible by certain characters. That's way more satisfying. Like, oh, that's on that ledge. Oh, this character can't get to that ledge, but there's like a stompy block here, and that means that that guy could get onto it. Ah, oh, I should switch to that character. See, when you, when that's happening, you're like, ah, I'm solving the, the, the level. And you get to feel good about yourself. But like, in Donkey Kong, every single hallway is just full of collectibles. Donkey Kong 64. Every single hallway and every single room... That guy just jumped off a cliff is full of collectibles, and they're just arbitrarily assigned to characters. So while the game does have each character having an ability of some sort, and only which means that only that character can access certain parts of the, of the game, and so there are those moments where you're like, aha, and then you solve the part, there's also just a huge amount of busy, busy work where there's a bunch of areas of the game that you can only solve by bringing the right character for arbitrary reasons. Like, oh, those all those bananas are blue. You can only pick them up with the blue guy. Better pick, better play the blue character. And that's way less, that's way less satisfying than solving, than like a genuine puzzle solution. Jet Force Gemini does something different. Ooh, I almost shot, I almost, I reflexively tr wanted to pull the trigger because there was an ant and I almost did it at the bears. Jet Force Gemini does do the thing where each character can only access certain things because of a reason that's in the game. Like an item you pick up, or uh, key cards, or each character's innate ability. Or the jetpack you unlock halfway through the game. So either, you either need the jetpack, or you need the character-specific ability, or you need an item that you get in a campaign, which seem to be character-specific also. Like Juno gets a crowbar, and Vela gets a magazine, and so on. Uh, and then there's the key cards on top of that, and the key cards themselves are accessed based on which level you've been to and what ca what abilities the character may or may not need to get the key cards. Although maybe everyone can get every key card eventually. It's just you start off with different configurations of key cards based on what levels you came from. So like that part they nailed. That part's interesting. The the somewhat messy thing is that. While many of the, like, a game like, like uh, Banjo-Kazooie has Gruntilda's Lair. So you explore Gruntilda's Lair and you get all the puzzle doors open via Jiggies. And you can play whatever level you want at any time. And go straight into there to, like, go collect what, you've, what you're missing. But in this game, they do this, where each... There are a bunch of divorced worlds from each other that are only accessible by flying to them, and you can only- when you fly to a level, you can only land in one part of the level. So you have to land in the specific part of the level that, uh, I don't think that's what I want. You have to land in the specific part of the level that, uh, that lets you land there, and then you have to play through all of the levels that are between where you landed and where you want to go, linearly. And all these- like, all these other aspects, it's like, mm -hmm. Hmm. And then it's a little exasperated by the fact that, uh, all the stuff that you've collected before doesn't count. Because you have to do it all in one successful run. The fact that tribals can die makes that make a little more sense, but it's still like, you're like, ah, start the whole thing over. Whenever you, whenever any mistake is made is, is, a, is a little, little rough. Sorry about Flopsy. She gets bored. I was sudden gored. She gets bored being stuck way out here. Actually, I get pretty lonely myself sometimes. I, uh, don't suppose you got something that could help me take my mind off at all. 
I'd make it worth your while, of course. Nobody regrets doing business with old Fernando. <laughs> Let's say you help me out. I'll let you take a look around the mine, okay? Go on, it's really interesting. Great, uh, historical value. <laughs> it's full of slaves! Ah, it's really distressing that a thing full of slaves is already being called historical value while the slaves are still in there. What a distinct, what a distressing American little moment. <laughs> and if it's tribals are after, you can barely move for the little pest down there. That's assuming Flopsy hasn't sneaked in and even some since I last looked. So, so, what do you say, any offers? What's that? A magazine? It certainly looks like it could prove a pleasant distraction during those solitary moments. Press the A button to let me take a closer look. Kula Limpa. <laughs> oh, you're a star. I can barely wait to get started. Here's the key to the mine. Off you go. Lock the door on your way out. I'll be off then. <clears throat> Lock the door on the way out. He's not even considering the idea. Well, he no, he said if you're, if you're after tribals, you can barely move because there's so many of them in there. It's like he's... N but like, he wants me to lock the door, but like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal all your tribals, sir. <laughs> I don't know what I'm lo I guess the resources inside. I there probably aren't any enemies in here, right? Because it was, it was sealed. It's a third party. Guys, no, stop slaving, I'm here. Yeah, the stuff I was talking about, like, it's not a massive, glaring, like, like, a uh, deal breaker for Jet Force Gemini. And not necessarily for DK either, although I think for many it actually is. Maybe even in both cases. Because, yeah, it, it, many a many a many a person talks about how they never beat this game because of the tribal hunt at the end. And I don't think it's exclusively because you have to save all the bears, but because of the how the game me mechanically implements the process of backtracking to save the bears. Because there is the rewarding aspect of the exploration and the problem solving and figuring out which character to take and other moments like that. But there's also elements that are less satisfying. Would like playing the same level for the third time because everybody else needs to go through that level. Not because of what's in the level, but because of what's after that level, because you have to play them in, in order and stuff like that. Like, there's, de there's details that could be different. Whereas I'll, I'll, f I'll come out, I'll come out and straight up say it's a flaw in Donkey Kong that there are, there are character specific collectibles in the game beyond the type that you get by using the character's ability to reach them. They, they, they should not all be arbitrarily uh, the color of a particular DK character. You should be able to, you should be able to collect every single one of them uh, as any character if you can touch it. They shouldn't be like magic ghost ones you can't get otherwise, because that's just pointless. How do I call that down? Yo, tribal, you want to get saved or not? What is happening here? What? 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 <laughs> This first Gemini, you're strange. Oh god, it didn't stop. I always forget the elevators don't stop. Dead first Gemini, you're a strange game. <laughs> and that mechanic will never be seen again. Monkey destruction switch. Hey friend. Couldn't have given me a hand there, huh? You guys are great. You're doing a bang-up job. Keep it up. Are we? I'm stealing all your slaves. They're all mine now. Ha ha ha. Monkey destruction switch. There's something uniquely painful about having like a weird 
meme quote thing stuck in your brain that almost nobody will have any idea what you're talking about. Hello. There was also a door this way. I gotta remember the back where I saw that mole, there was two there was two paths there too. So I gotta go back and go left there. Be very thorough. We should be fine, just don't leave until I've gotten all of them. Hey guys. Look how sad his eyeballs are. Look at that sad, look at the giant glistening crying eyes. They make them extra sad just for you. <laughs> Yeah, on some level I get the idea of like a, like being able to have replay value and play the mission, play the game over and over again forever, I guess, maybe. Although you could always just start over. But like, I do feel like it cheapens things when you've already saved every tribal in an entire level, and then you come back and they're all back. And you're just like, but... But this is the game where I save all the tribals. Like, there's an ending that is accomplished by saving all the tribals. So it'd be really, it feels wrong. When I save all the tribals... What is that? What is happening? <clears throat> oh my god. I'm the tribal now. Here, be here begins the revolt. My god. But yeah, in a game about saving every tribal where there's an ending that's like the conclusion of you successfully saving every tribal... It kind of feels like it might be a little like, tonally resonant to maintain the continuity and individuality of each tribal and have them not just respawn when you've already saved them, especially when you've already saved all the ones in an entire level. It feels like that entire level should then be devoid of tribals when you come back. Because you did it! Even if we're going to accept the video gamey idea of the tribals of an individual level respawning constantly. Dude, where are all these paths? Well, that's just that's just my read on the thing. I gotta figure how to get to these places. I'm also wondering what the point of becoming a tribal was. Does it do something? I wonder, or is it just like a funny? Is it just like a gimmick? Do tribals have abilities I can use? I mean, one of them knows magic, but I, that seemed not normal. If they all knew magic, I'd think that maybe they'd be get slave, enslaved less. Oh, this is the other path. Just between you and me, furry, us Jet Force do-gooders want to break up our little party. Having Mizar in power isn't such a bad idea, you know. Could give us a lot of room for expansion. And you don't really mind working for good old far for good old Farmer, do you? His name's Farmer? Come on, I'm not that bad. Anyway, you like mining, I like money. It's the perfect partnership. You never know, I might even start paying you one day. But don't hold your breath. Look, this is what Jet Force will be after. If, if I give it to you, can you go and bury it somewhere? Sure thing, boss, I'll take care of it. It's a shit part, isn't it? That, that was the point of this? Ha! Ah, you little shit. I need to get back to work. Goddamn bullet immune freaking moles. I'm out of I'm actually out of shots. She doesn't have the homing launcher. That little shit. There's actually some depth there though. The aspect of how slavers convinced themselves that what they were doing was right and actually good for the slaves. 
Which was a thing, like, people who owned slaves convinced themselves that they were actually, like, uplifting the slaves because they were, like, subhuman and they were bringing them culture and some- a lot- a whole lot of bullshit. Like, just the most bizarre, self-congratulatory complex, because the human mind wants to convince itself that it's in the right, like, all the time. Even if you're literally a slave owner, that still happens, apparently. And that's distressing. But it's there. So the fact that he was like... Like, the, like he was weirdly trusting of me with this idea that like... Uh, the Jet Force, the Jet Force are gonna fuck this all up. But like, you like it here, right? Like, this is good. Like, the idea that he'd be so self-deluded to think that... The slaves would be on his side... Isn't entirely surprising. And that's why he gave me the ship part that the jet that the jet force are after. Which also extra fucked up on the miners part because of, I mean this the moles part, because that means it's not just about Mizar being in power, like giving keeping the ship part away from us stops us from saving our planet. So our planet's gonna get attacked and blown up or whatever by Mizar. So it's way worse. Hello. Well, I should have stood on that when I did that. To their credit, it's not a pure monkey destruction switch. The buttons you shoot suddenly are on this planet like a few times in this level. Making it kind of a theme for the level as opposed to just like a weird one-off. So it's not a proper monkey destruction switch or big lipped alligator moment or so on. There's a bunch of different terms for similar ideas in different more media formats. You can definitely feel like it was kind of jammed in here, though, because that is not... That's not an asset for a button. That asset right there is what they use to mark doors to tell you which way is forward and which way is backwards in the game. So they reuse an asset from elsewhere in the game. Even though it's contradictory. And they just kind of hoped the player would think to shoot it. Even though the game is- even though at this point in the game they've seen hundreds of those and they were not interactive. Because they were signposts, not buttons. But suddenly it's a button now? It's a little weird, but it's not a huge leap to try. So... It's not a massive catastrophe or anything. Is this where I saved that guy? Oh, we're back here. Wait. Did that make sense? I thought it was somewhere else. But maybe I made some kind of mistake. Oh, because we went across here before. But it was less noticeable that there was a path down here. Oh, I think I looked down here and saw that guy there even, but didn't realize that it was like... the other end of an elevator. I have definitely lost track of uh, how far we are. Okay, there's still three more in the mine. Um, I feel like I already did the loop up here, so let's go back down there. I think I want to go back to where I got the jet fuel. The jetpack fuel. If there's a place that's likely to have stuff in it, it seems like it'd be right there. Anything down here? Hmm. 
Maybe the jet fuel exists exclusively for you to just go back up the shaft? Hmm... It might take me a while to find whoever's left. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I might be right about the fuel. If and yeah, maybe... Maybe you go to the bottom of the elevator shaft, and then you get... the fuel. And then you fly to the top of the elevator. And maybe if you get, maybe you can go even higher? That's what I'm thinking right now, is maybe you can go even higher than your starting point. And then at that point, there'd be like another floor maybe that has more tribals on it? Because we only have three to go. But here's the issue. I can't use my jetpack! Because I'm a tribal! So in this form, that ability doesn't exist. I wonder if this is a monkey destruction switch or not. Not the buttons, but the tribal form. Okay, th yeah, this is where it, this is what I saw right when I changed. Yeah, so I don't I don't need the form anymore because I, I found what that was for. But yeah, I, I do wonder if I'll ever change forms again. Elsewhere in the game, we'll see. Ooh. All right, let's try this again next episode.